We're here at the U.S. Capitol, and it's just a few hours from now. The Holy Father is going to arrive on Capitol Hill and be the first pope to speak to a joint meeting of Congress. But the history here isn't just about firsts. It is about this confluence of the man, the message, and the moment in our particular history. So how are the lawmakers going to respond? We have one right here who wants to talk to us about it, Senator Angus ha uh, King. He is, of course, the independent senator from Maine. Senator, it is very good, good, good to be with you. Man. You just handed me something that is certainly going to be on the Pope's agenda, which is climate change. He spoke about it in great detail right. uh, on the White House lawn. You handed me a card that says, here's everything you need to know about global warming. And it has a graph about CO2 that's going up, and you have temperatures here, CO2 levels and temperature. You say it's very simple. Donald Trump just said, very clearly, as clear as this card you handed me, I don't believe in it. I'm sort of speechless, which is unusual for a politician. He is uh, representative of a group of thought in this country. But though, the science, you know. the, the science is so clear. I mean, CO2 is at uh, uh, way more than it's been for the last three million years. The last time CO2 was at the level that it's at now, oceans were 60 feet higher. It's just I cycles, mean, cycles not, of weather. But that's what the card says. We've had cycles. We had cycles for 900,000 years. And then all of a sudden in 1860, it goes up it just rockets upwards, and that's when we started burning stuff in big quantity. Now, although you did create this card, and your name is on the bottom, and you're selling them at a very high price, which I think might be somehow a felony, but the idea that you have plenty of intelligent people uh, in Congress who do not believe what's on this card, how do you justify that? I don't know how, uh, I mean, to me, I, I think we can argue, it's legitimate to argue about means and how we deal with this and what's the technology and what we do, but arguing about the science is like arguing that light doesn't go 186,000 miles a second. I mean, that's just, that, this is just data. And, uh, light goes 186,000 Yeah, think miles of that. The, the Earth signal, that's how fast. They should call it like the speed of light. Nothing goes that fast. <laughs> but it's, but it, it is, uh, I, there's plenty of room for debate. But I don't understand the debate about the fact that something's going well, because on. Because you don't have to debate what to do if you avoid the premise and say there's nothing there. So that brings us to the Pope. He's going to come today. He's going to say, I got one of Senator King's cards. I believe uh, that there is global warming and it is up to our stewardship of humanity and of the earth that uh, we live on to fix it. How do you think the message will be received? Well, I think some people are going to receive it very well and some are going to be uh, sort of resistant. But I think the important thing about the Pope's message is that this is a theological and an ethical issue. He's, he's been criticized. I've heard people say, well, he ought to stick to theology and, and morals and leave the science to the scientists. Well, one thing, he, he has a degree in chemistry. Right. That's a, you know, he is a scientist. But the other is that this is, this is all about ethics. This is about stewardship of this planet that God gave us. And there's all kinds of references in the, in the Bible to taking care of, of, of the earth. Of course, one of them is, thou shalt not steal. And if we destroy the earth, we're stealing for future generations. That's, that's, I, I think this is an ethical issue. Sometimes things are a coincidence, sometimes they are not. Could you imagine a moment that is better for the Pope to be here than the one right now, given what's going on in the political dialogue, as assumed in the person of Donald Trump? Well, I'm not going to compare the Pope to Donald Trump. No, but I'm I, saying I, you wouldn't compare them. You would contrast them. Well, <laughs> the Pope is coming here to say, you guys have to be more tolerant. You've got to think about each other more. You've got to be better than what's brought at you when it's negative. And his voice is soft. His voice is soft, he's calm, and he's appealing to the better angels of our nature. And I think that's really important in our politics. I'm convinced that leadership matters and that we all have the capacity to go in a good direction or a bad direction depending upon how we're led. And I think the Pope's message, uh, and not only is the message, but his demeanor. He's a humble man, a great story about when he was first elected. They wanted to put all the fancy robes on him. He said, no, they said, but you got to, this is important. He said, you know what he said? The carnival's over. <laughs> he he's Do you remember a him going guy. to the hotel to settle his check? Uh, he I went don't... to his own hotel with his suitcase in his hand and settled his bill. Yeah. Right after he became pope. And 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 I think that's a message that it doesn't hurt us to hear every now and then. Now, it's going to be delivered in a beautiful way. We know that. Uh, we see how he electrifies people, whether they have faith in their lives or they do not. I don't think it even matters to him, really, even though he's the head of a billion Catholics. I think to him it's about energizing the spirit, his uh, signature expression, haciendo lío, you know, go make a ruckus, get involved in things. It doesn't have the word Catholic in it. Right. Um, do you think that the message will resonate in a way that is real and actually matter to the people who are in D.C. right now? 
I think it will. I, I think uh, the, the combination of the man and the message, I, th I think it will. I mean, it's not, people aren't going to walk out and say, you know, glory, hallelujah, I'm converted. But I think there, there is going to be some deep thought. There has to be uh, when you listen to a man of this uh, credibility and, and thoughtfulness. He's, he's, uh, he, the, the world is fortunate that this particular guy came to this position at this moment in time. Yeah, and I think you know, sometimes you, nothing he's going to say is technically new. Certainly there's a right. points in the Catholic Catechism. Certainly there's a points popes have made before. Certainly Bergoglio, the man who is Pope Francis, has made them before. But sometimes it is the moment. Sometimes it is the time. Right. And we are so twisted up and negative in terms of what we're doing in politics right now. So, uh, you know, so much disunity. Maybe it will smack fresh and new. That's the hope. Well, right? 50 years ago, Martin Luther King made a speech about a mile down the street that changed America. Uh, and uh, nobody really anticipated that. It wasn't any, you know, it was a big march. But that speech electrified the country. And uh, I, I can't. Uh, say that this is going to do that, although I just read a preliminary draft and I found it. Don't get the Pope I, I, on I your bad side, Senator. It was, uh, let me just say, uh, uh, it, it, I, I was choked up. It's, uh, it's pretty powerful. Senator King. Chris, good to see you. Always a pleasure. Thank you for trying to make us better. Thank you for this card. Yes, sir. I appreciate get it. On, get it on my website. See? He's <laughs> trying to sell them again. Michaela, you know how much he's trying to sell this card to me for? I'm not, I'm not going to, I don't even want to say it. It's just, boy, oh boy, if the Pope knew, if the Pope knew, oh, Senator. Oh, goodness. Hey, see you, buddy. <laughs>